Amen. Praise God. Welcome to Stone Tower Church, Nephew. Uh, we want to pray and ask the Lord to bless us as we share his word. Those who are here and those who are online. Come on, let's give it up for everybody that's connected or we be connected. Or Father, in Jesus' name, we ask you to maximize our time together. I pray that you would speak not only to those who are here, but to those who are watching. I pray, Father God, that faith would rise as we wait upon the Lord. I pray that you would think through my mind, speak through my vocal cords. I pray for burdens to be removed, yokes to be destroyed. Father, we pray that you would cover each one of us, every family represented here, and every family connected online. Lord God, we pray, have your way. In Jesus' name, I pray that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear and a heart that will understand. In Jesus' precious name. Now say with me out loud, Jehovah Nisi. Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner. The Lord is my banner. I've got to do it. Uh, right? Yeah. Let's do it one more time. The Lord is my banner. There you go. We've been talking about the book of Exodus, and each week we, you know, thank God we crossed the Red Sea, we're out of Egypt, but we're seeing the dynamic and, and how important it is to understand that sometimes you can be physically out of something, but still be attached to the place where you left. Amen? Amen. Let me say that again, because this is a big thing. It's like sometimes you can physically be out, out of situation. Out of a relationship, out of a financial hardship, out of a, a bitterness, out of a... You, you, you're actually, physically, you're out, but emotionally, you're still attached to it. So then, it's like, you know, how do we handle this? How do we... Because well, we, we, it's almost like you've got to... It's like an umbilical cord. You've you got to cut it. Otherwise, you, you, you are here, but you're acting like you are in the, there. You are in a new place having an old harvest. You are in a new place. I mean, you can manifest something new, but because you're connected, you don't see the newness of God being manifested. Amen? So when we go, it was like uh, Exodus 14. We've seen that God revealed himself as the deliverer. Exodus 14, God reveals himself as a deliverer. Exodus 15, God reveals himself as a healer. It was quite interesting because the, the, the waters were bitter, Mara. But he introduces himself now as a healer, Jehovah Rapha. So 14, deliverer. 15, he's a healer. And he specifically gives Moses some direction that through that, the waters that were bitter become sweet. Exodus 16, God reviews himself as a provider. And we shared a little bit last week because they, they were missing meat. They were missing what they had in Egypt, but it was all about food. They were missing that. So today we're going to go to Exodus 17. So if you've got your Bibles, let's go to Exodus 17. Is it? There you go. Thank you. I like those little things, right? Today's the 17th, and we are in Exodus 17th. Amen. Now watch this, because it says, At the Lord's command, at the Lord's command, the whole community of Israel left the wilderness of sin. And I shared that last week. It was not because they sinned, even though they did, but it was because he was on the going through the Sinai, sin left the wilderness of sin and moved from place to place as the, at the Lord's command. So we see like, because sometimes we think like, why why we keep moving? Why is the Lord allowing this? But look, at the Lord's command, the whole community of Israel left the wilderness of sin and moved from place to place. Eventually, they camped at Rephidim. Is that how you say it? Is that how you pronounce it? Yeah. Rephidim? <laughs> Nobody knows? Yeah. Nobody cares? <laughs> so say that with me then Rephidim Rephidim means a resting place very important because you see why so they camped at Rephidim they camped at a resting place 
But there was no water there for the people to drink. And you would think, after all that they've been through, that's not a big deal. Right? I mean, if God, they cross the Red Sea, they go to the other side. It was a dry place. It was dry when they go through. And then God brings the water back and kills all the Egyptians and all the chariots and everything just, you know, in that Red Sea. Uh, if they, three days later, they complained because the waters were bitter. Then a month later, on the, fi- the second month, on the 15th day, which was about a fifth, uh, one month later, they complained because of food. So there's something going on here. It's like, you know, I don't know, it's almost like when we see that, we, we might disconnect. And I don't want us to disconnect. I want us to connect with what they went through because it would be easier to say, how could they do such a thing? Don't they get it? I guess not. But I want us to, I, you know, think about it. Lord, do I have something in my life like that? Where you keep showing yourself, you keep manifesting, you keep bringing healing, and you keep bringing deliverance, and you keep making a way where there seems to be a way, and still, Lord God, we're always finding something to complain. Because this, you know, it's easier to look at them and say, man, shame on you. You know, I mean, I've learned that, what's that expression everybody talks about? When they don't want to say that the person is a little, oh, bless his heart. <laughs> I've seen that. I mean, I didn't know that. It was one time we went to watch this guy. He's a Christian comedian, and he, he was talking about how we use "bless his heart" in in, in, uh, in our culture, you know. And after that, when anybody tells you, "Oh, bless your heart," when they tell me, it's kind of oh, because me, you're kind of right, you're kind of slow. If, if someone comes to you and says, "Oh," I mean, there's several different ways to understand, but mainly it's like, oh, bless your heart. So it would be like telling those people, oh, bless their hearts. The translation would be, why they're so stupid. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If I understood correctly, that's what it means. It's like, how can they be that slow? Bless their heart. <laughs> right? So bless their heart. Because it says that once more the people complain against Moses. Now, first complaint was Exodus 14:10. We're not going to read it, but Exodus 14:10, they complained when the Egyptians were coming against them. They thought they were going to die. Second time was three days after they crossed the Red Sea. They complained because they only had bitter water to drink. Exodus 15:22. Uh, the third time was one month later after they left Egypt. They complained for lack of bread and meat. Exodus 16:1 to 3. Now. There's a few things that I believe that, you know, when we are going through something and there is a purpose and I believe God wants us to get something. It's not just because, you know, and a few things. Number one, it's like, it's to know God. Say that with me, to know God. Because the word of God says, John 8, 31, then Jesus said to the Jews who believed him. If you abide, if you abide in my word, and and you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Now, watch this, because it's not talking about any kind of truth. It's the truth that I know that makes me free. So it's like we can have a lot of word like we do and praise God for that and thank God for all the programs and tea and and on TV online and still why we still can. You know, thank God for all the ways that we can have access to the truth, but the truth that makes me free. I mean, it won't help if I have the Bible open on Psalms 91 on top of my bed. If I don't know that he who abides in the secret of the Almighty shall dwell. Amen. So it's like it has to be a personal, it has to be an intimate relationship with the truth. Only the truth that I know will make me free. So I can be free in some areas, but if I'm bound in a specific area in my life, that means that I don't know the truth in that area. And I hope you don't get offended to that because we all are dealing with something somewhere. It's not like everybody's free. 
But whatever it is, it's like there is that specific, it is that area. It's that like, oh, man, bless your heart. <laughs> right? It's that spot where it's like, it always gets you. It's, it's, it's like, you don't know why, but it's something happens. It's like, you know, it, 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 it's, it's like them. They, I mean, you see that these people are bitter. And when I read, it's like God was testing them. You know, it's, it's not because God did not know what they had in their hearts. God was testing them so they should, would know what they had in their hearts and they didn't know it. Because yeah, when we're tested, that's what it is. It, it's not about, you know, I mean, when, even in school, the test is not because, you know, you would know what is in the heart of the teacher. It's so the teacher would know what's in your heart when you're tested. So it's the same thing when God allows some things in our lives is so that we would know where we are. But again, the only truth that will set us free is the truth that we know. The truth that we know. And if we go to the Old Testament, it's even more. It goes deeper. Because why? Because the word knowing in the Old Testament, it was related to intimacy. Adam knew Eve. And Cain was born. So it's not just a superficial, it's a deeper relationship that out of that relationship, there is an intimacy and out of that intimacy, something is birthed. So it's like, so there is no excuse like, oh, yeah, 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 I know, Pastor, but I'm not like that. But you can be. Because if I know the truth, if I'm intimate with the truth, I'm going to get pregnant of a different thing that I didn't birth or I didn't have before. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. So that's, that's some of the purpose. It's like knowing the truth to the point that you're free. The other thing is like know your trials. The purpose. There's a purpose in every trial. Especially if you're serving God. So it's like, know, know your trial. Psalms 119.67 says, Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now, I obey your word. You are good. And what you do is good. Teach me your decrees. Though the arrogant have smeared me with lies, I keep your precepts with all my heart. Their hearts are callous and unfeeling, but I delight in your law. It was good for me to be afflicted. You see, not many people say amen to that part. It was good for me to be afflicted. Amen. Like, Woo, hallelujah. You know, so that I might learn your decrees. The law from your mouth is more precious to me than thousands of pieces of silver and gold. Yeah, amen. It was good. It's hard to say that when we're going through the trial. So the third thing to know is like, know your heart. Psalms 139, 23. The psalmist said, search me, O God. Search me and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. See if there is any offensive way in me. See if there is any. So it could be more than one. See if there is any offensive way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. Amen. Now, if we're going to, you know, if we, like we say today, if we're going to see a victory, we have to, we're going to have to know the weapons that we have. Yeah. If we're going to see a victory, well, I mean, to start, it's like we can't do what we always did and expect a different result. So it's got to be shifts. And I know we all are like that. We all, you know, that there's some areas that's like for a shift, for a change to come. I mean, there's strong resistance. Especially if we've done it, you know, I mean, they were doing it for 400 years. That's why it was hard for them to detach from something, to get into something that they didn't know. Because it was like, well, I don't even know if that works. Hello? Amen? So there is that little fear, like, well, but I did this way, and it seems like it's all working just fine. Yeah, but if it's not God's way, it doesn't, it, you know, how can you expect to have God's results if you want to do God's ways? Yeah, yeah. Amen. How can I, you know, how, how can I expect? It's, it's the same thing, like, 
it's funny because people, you know, in the world, it's like, in general, they say that there's no God, there's no God, there's no God, there's no God, there's no God. And then the hurricane comes, first thing they say, oh my God. Oh, now there's a God? You go against God, you attack God, you, you curse and you, you know, use God's name in vain. But then when there's a hurricane, when there's an accident, there's something, it's like, oh my God. Uh, too late now. Yeah. Right? Because <laughs> it's like, I've heard someone say this and I love it. It's like, you're never going to attract what you attack. deeper than our service here, as you can see. But I think we're going to have to learn how to speak in parables from now on. Amen. You're never going to attack, uh, attract what you attack. Just say, bless your heart. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Because it's like, attack, 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 and then it's like, oh no, we're going to bring unity. Wrong. Because to bring unity, we're going to have to bring change. If we're expecting, you know, to bring unity, if we're expecting to uh, bring closer, it is not going to be on the basis of, I can do it, and but you don't. Amen. And that's the thing. When we go to the Word of God, you know what? Everybody's going to be accountable. Amen. Seems like some people are getting a free pass. <laughs> Sooner or later. Everybody. Amen. Isn't that what the word says? Yes. It's going to come a day. We're all going to face him. It's going to come a day. There is going to be judgment. So then nobody can say, oh, I didn't know it was like that. Oh, I didn't know it was a, there was a God. Yeah, you had a thousand chances to repent, to apologize, to regret, to make it right, change your ways. To say different, to go, to get closer, to love, to sow, to bless, to hug, to love. I mean, you had it over and over and over and over. So there's not going to be anybody like, well, I didn't know. No, 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 no. Amen. So why we have an opportunity? Let's make it right. Amen. 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 So we need to know our weapons. The word of God says, the word, 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 2 Corinthians 10, 3 to 6. The word is an, an, uh, an principle. I mean, I, I got this from the Message Bible because I thought it was very, you know, it's just a little different. Because it, it talks about the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Look at how the message says. The world is in principle. It's dog eats dog out there. <laughs> the world doesn't fight fair. But we don't live or fight our battles that way. Amen. Never have, never will. The tools of our trade aren't for marketing or manipulation. But they are for demolishing that entire massively corrupt culture. Amen. We use our powerful God tools for smashing warped philosophies. Tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God. Feeding every loose thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. All right, that's good. Yeah, amen. I'm going to read it again. We use our powerful God tools for smashing warped philosophies. Tearing down barriers erected against the truth of God. Feeding every loose thought. Thought and emotion and impulse into the structure of life shaped by Christ. Amen. Our tools are ready at hand for clearing the ground of every obstruction and building lives of obedience into maturity. Amen. 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 Now, so once more, the people complained against Moses, give us water to drink. They demanded. Quiet, Moses replied. Why are you complaining against me? And why are you testing the Lord? 
but tormented by thirst. Just a side note. Have you ever been dehydrated? Is it bad? It is bad. I mean, depending on the level of your dehydration, it's going to affect your thinking. Depending if you're really, really dehydrated, it's going to affect your joints. It's going to affect your mobility. It's going to affect the way that you do life. Now, and, and you know, most of us agree here that you be, you know how it is, you know, and depending the age that you are, it gets even worse to the point that you could have, it's almost like you can have effects of amnesia. And you don't even remember, or you know, you got fog in your mind. So it's like, what would happen if this is in the natural? What happens if you're spiritually dehydrated? What happens if we drink water only once a week? Spiritually. I mean, it's, you know, some people say you can go like, what, how many days without water? Three. Three? So no wonder if the only time is when we come together on Sunday mornings, and I'm not putting that down, but if that's the only time that you open your Bible, think about it. You're having seven days, and then you come for a drink once a week. They got quiet. So I hope you're listening. So no wonder it's it's like the some things it's like we, we don't get it because it's like we're spiritually high dangerous. So what we need to do? We we need to go to the fountain. Who is the fountain? Jesus. Because yeah, the more we go, the more I drink, I'm gonna feel refreshed. I'm gonna feel like okay, God, I can go through this. Yeah, amen. Lord, I can go through another week. Lord, I, I Lord, I, I so you need to find places and ways. That you, you go and you have a drink. Because it's bad when Christians are dry. Yeah, amen. Oh, church, it's bad. Yeah. Right? I don't know if you know anybody that's dry, bitter. I used to say that when I was young, and I had no clue. You know, because I joked about it. I said, oh, you know what? There's some people who look like they're baptized in lemon. <laughs> I'm serious. I said that for years. On well, my early 20s. You know. And now that I'm getting close to 50, it's worse than I thought. <laughs> right? Yeah, amen. It's almost like, oh. Bless your heart. <laughs> if you're spiritually dry. Because they were. Give us water. They go against Moses. And we know every time they attack Moses. And I think one of the problems was they, was they were trying to get from Moses something that they should go to God. Yeah. And every time, not only then, but now, every time we, we expect men to quench our thirst, something bad is going to happen. Every time we expect, every time it's like we're thirst for something, but we're not going to God. We're going to man. I'm going to say that again. Because there's something there. Every time. It's like, so we're expecting. It, it, it was like that woman in the, at the well. Why did she have five husbands and now the sixth one? It was not even her own. So the five first ones, it was, they were her husband. I don't know what happened. You know, everybody, I've seen lots of messages. Everybody put her down. Very few people defend her. I defend her. Because what I see in her life, the, only, the problem was she was trying to quench her thirst to relationships. How do we know that? Because it goes from water to, you know, uh, floods of water, spiritual water, living water. Then he goes to the word. Then he goes to the witness. Then he goes to the prophetic word. When Jesus said, bring your husband. And she said, I don't have a husband. Then he said, you said, well. 
Because you have had five. And the, the one now that you're with, it's not even your own. What was he trying to do? I'm thirsty. And I'm going to go. And I need someone. And I need someone. And I need someone. And I need someone. And it could be that maybe she couldn't have babies. So the husband could divorce them because they couldn't have babies. So it's not because she was going after another man. The sixth time, well, number six, which represents men. So on the sixth time, he was like, you know what? I'm tired. So I'm going to go after somebody else's husband. And bless her heart. But then the seventh man she meets with is Jesus. And something changes. Because you see that in the conversation, it goes from that to worship. Thank you, Lord. So it's like, I'm so spiritually dehydrated. And she was like, well, our parents, they worshiped in this mountain, but the Jews say that we should worship in that mountain, and they, they believe there was different places. Then Jesus says, what? Well, it's, it's coming a time where my father is searching. So if his church is not easy to find, he's searching for true worshipers that worship the father in spirit and in truth. So if there's true worshipers, there are worshipers that are not worshiping in truth. So she was spiritually dehydrated. And, and, you know, we could use any other things. I'm just using the relationship because that's where, where she was, you know, she thought she would be filled. There's people that they do that through social media. And I thought this was a joke when I saw videos online of people that get depressed. I don't know if you've seen it. Because not many people liked their posts. Until they start texting me. Pastor, that has happened in Brazil, believe me. You didn't like my post. And I'm like, I mean, they say that I've got like 4,597 friends online. Can you imagine if I spend all day long seeing what everybody else does? I don't even see the post of my wife. I don't. That's why I apologize publicly. But I'm not going to be like, what did she say? Oh, bad. Oh, no. Let me see what Jesse said. Kendrick. Oh. Can you imagine the bondage this is? And I do, I do my posts, and I already shared why I share. I share because there, we have all of our families, mine and my wife's, they're in Brazil. This is the only way they can see what we do. Actually, if we didn't do it the way we do it, they would not even see our kids grow up. Because last time they were in Brazil was seven years ago. I'm not trying to put you down. Praise God if you have your family close. Praise God if you see them twice a year. Praise God if you've seen them and happy birthdays and Easter celebrations and Thanksgiving dinners and you go to games and you, you go see them. They don't. So if you're offended with my Facebook posts, bless your heart. <laughs> <laughs> and I do take them off out of, you know, after a while because then the family says, oh, look what they did. Look what they went. Then there's another group of people that think the only thing we do is to go out. <laughs> I don't even know how I got on this. <laughs> oh, come on, let's ride this horse. <laughs> but it's true. There's people that when they would, because, you know, I, I should, I didn't. My wife, she's way smarter than me on those things. It's like, you know, she, she can share only with a, a family. And, uh, so when she has her pictures, she puts everybody, her family and my family. I didn't do that early. So now I don't know how to do it. So now when I do it, it could be that 5,000 people is going to see that I went to St. Louis in an art museum. <laughs> right? And she always tells me, it's easy. You can change that. You know? 
know that there's a way where you share. Because to me, it's like, if you're my friend, so I cannot share with you my pictures? <laughs> right? It's like, why? Like, I love to see, you know, I'm not going to go after your picture. But if sometimes it pops up, I like it. Mm -hmm. I saw it, like, I think it was this week, you put something for baby, right? Mm -hmm. I love it. <laughs> you know, but then... It's like people are, there's people that are online to see even what you like. <laughs> he liked her baby pictures. Bless his heart. You know, it's like, please. You know, it's not, I, I don't do that. I, and is it good to have? It is awesome. On my birthday, I had over a thousand people say to me, happy birthday. That good? Amen. But I'm not going to be addicted to that. And I hope you're not either. You know? And that's how you have those people do stupid things just so other people can laugh and they can make money off of it. When they do those pranks, oh, there's people making money on that. Big time money. And the person is there, poor thing. I mean, you know, struggling, suffering, car broke down. You know? I mean, there's stuff like that. The, 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 the UPS guy comes and takes the package and he goes he forgets to put the truck in parking and then you see those things you know but someone <laughs> which is not the guy who's going to have to pay for the truck is making money off of it but what a life if the only thing is like so again what are those people trying to do i mean it's, i'm serious there's people that they cry if there is no many likes like like like, like, like. Mm. oh like 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 Oh, we have a thousand people that watched our service today. I'm not addicted to them. I don't care. You know, if you're connected, praise God. We bless you. But, you know, it's not like I'm not doing for that. I don't, I, I'm not dry to the point that I need likes of somebody else that doesn't even like me. No, it's bad. If you, th I mean, <laughs> you know, it's like the person that is so alone that she thought that the brother in the church was kind of, you know, interested in her. And the poor guy, the only thing he did, he was serving communion. <laughs> Have you ever seen that? Yeah, communion play? It's like, oh, he lost me. No, he's just serving communion. I mean, if that's the only time you think, you know, someone's paying attention to you, I mean, you need prayer. Amen. <laughs> you know, so what, what, how are you trying? Because these people, they have a serious problem of dehydration. Every time they complain about God and they complain about Moses and they complain and they complain and they complain and they complain, and they complain again. And they complain because it was, they complain because there was no vegan. They complain. So what was the problem? Spiritual dehydration. Can I be your healer? Can I be your provider? Can I be the one who's going to heal? Can I be the one who's going to set you free? Can I be your way maker? Can I be Jehovah Nisi in your life? Not Moses, not Aaron, not Ur. I am the one who brought you out of Egypt. Egypt, and I want you to get into the promised land, but you're going to have to walk. I'm not going to carry them. Are you with me? Now watch this. Let's go back. So the Lord said to Moses, walk out in front of the people. Because Moses cried out to the Lord, what should I do with this people? They are ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, you see, the truth that we know will make you free. If he didn't know the truth, reveal truth, the manifestation of the revelation of God's word for that situation, he would be stuck. What should I do with these people? They're ready to stone me. He was praying, Lord spoke, and because he knew the truth for that circumstance, boom, he was free. Watch. The Lord said to Moses, walk out in front of the people. Say that with me. Walk out. In front of the people. Of the people. That, that is a dynamic there that I love. It's very simple because we see Moses with the people. And he was with the people. He was with the people. He was with the people. Now the other times that they murmur and complain, we don't see Moses saying, what shall I do? They're ready to stone me. So he got to him. Not the other times, but this time he got into his mind. So that's what happened. Because he got into his mind... God speaks to him now, Moses, it's time for you to go ahead 
of the complaint. Oh, that's a good point. I'm even going to say it. Because we don't do CDs anymore. There were some CDs we did back then that if I preached something, I had to buy my own CD <laughs> to hear it again. You know, so now i got to go back and listen to it. But that's the thing. So he was with the people. But he had, he came, you know, he got to a place, and that's how we need to do, not only as a leader, as, you know, as, as we are people. Yeah, if we're surrounded, and believe me, there's a lot of complaint, 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 complaint. Anywhere you go, any social media platform that you turn to, there's people complaining, complaining. So what should we do? Turn it off. And walk ahead of the complaint. Because if you're stuck there, he, 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 he can get you. If he got Moses, come on. This guy, we're not talking about someone who's like, you know, if Moses got influenced, and if he, Moses, if the way that he thought was corrupted because of complaint, 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 don't you think? Why would it be any different with us? Hebrews 12, 14, I shared that last week. Pursue peace with all people, holiness, without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root. So it's not like, oh no, 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 my, my root of bitterness is very tiny. Lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble, and by this many become defiled. So roots of bitterness, if we don't deal with it, they're contagious. Are you with me? Now watch this. Because something happens here. Then the Lord said, walk out in front of the people, take your staff. This is amazing. Because I preach this for many. You know, take your staff. Take those who are close to you. Take your staff. You could be your staff, the church. Take, take, take the border group, the, the, the border team of the church. Take those who work with you. Take your staff. Of course, he was talking about the staff. The one who you use. Take your staff, the one you use who struck the water of the Nile, and call some of the elders of Israel to join you. I will stand before you on the rock at Mount Sinai. Strike the rock, and water will come gushing out. Then the people, then the people will be able to drink. So Moses struck the rock as he was told, and water gushed out as the elders looked on. Moses named the place. Moses named the place. Now watch this, very important. Moses named the place Massa, which means test, or Meribah, Meribah, which means arguing. Because the people of Israel argued with Moses and tested the Lord by saying, Is the Lord here with us or not? Now, watch what happens next. While the people of Israel were still in Rephidim, while the people of Israel were still in the resting place, that's the meaning of it, the warriors of Amalek attacked them. Moses commanded Joshua, choose some men to go out and fight the army of the Amalek for us. Tomorrow it will stand at the top of the hill, holding uh, the staff of God in my hand. Are you with me? Yeah. Because it's very important here. You see that they murmur, they complain. God in His grace, God in His mercy, God gave a direction. You with the people, go ahead of the people. You strike the rock. We know that the rock is Jesus Christ. We know that when He was struck, our water came out of, from His side and blood on the cross. So we know it's a picture of Jesus in the New Testament, hundreds of years before. But we see that that's the picture of Jesus. They drink from the water, and the water was Jesus. But it's important to see this. Who are these people? Who are the Amalekites? Because you think, man, who are the Amalekites? I never thought about this. I preached this scripture many times. I never thought, who are the Amalekites? How many of you want to know who are the Amalekites? Yeah. Okay. Genesis 36, 15 says, The descendants of Esau. Oh. The descendants of Esau, his oldest son, Eliphaz, became the leader of clans of Teman, Omar, Zepho, Kenaz, Korah, Gatam, and Amalek. So the Amalekites, so in other words, they're related. They're related. 
It's like, this is like, they are, I think it's cousins, so the second cousin. They're related. These are the clans in the land of Edom who descended from Eliphaz. All these were descendants of Esau with his wife, Ada. Now, it is important to, that, that we refresh our minds. What did Esau represent? Because Esau represented the one who did not know how to control his appetite. The one who despised his firstborn rights. The one who did not fear God. The one who represents strength of the flesh. And the one who has fleshly appetites. Are you with me? What, what was the problem? Because that's the other thing. When did they come? Deuteronomy 25, 17 says, Deuteronomy 25, 17, Never forget what the Amalekites did to you as you came from Egypt. Oh, never forget. This is, you know, a few years later in Deuteronomy, we see, Never forget what the Amalekites did to you. What did they did to you as you came out from Egypt? We know that Egypt represents the world. So we see the Amalekites attacking those who come out of something. They attacked you when you were exhausted and weary and they struck down those who were struggling, strangling behind. They had no fear of God. So the Amalekites came when you came out of Egypt. The Amalekites attacked when you were exhausted. Have you ever been attacked when you were exhausted? Come on, have you ever been attacked? When you're tired. Have you ever been, uh, you know, uh, on top of everything, you're so tired, you're so drained, and then, you know, it's, it's like, I mean, I see this even in, in marriage. Usually, usually, you don't have an argument when everything is fine. Usually you have an argument when you're tired and exhausted. And then you say something and your spouse understands something else. And if you try to make the point right, bless your heart. Because it's not going to work. Because it's the wrong time. What is the best thing to do? If you can, run. <laughs> run. Don't stay there. That's not what I said. Yes, it is what you said. No, it's not. I was the one who said it. Don't you think I would know what I said and why I said it? I mean, run. Because it seems like at that moment, someone is really exhausted, if not both of them. And you're trying to get something done with that atmosphere that you see is not the right one, the not right the spirit, on top of why would the enemy fight so much to divide our families? Why would, look, come on, talk to me. Why would the enemy, I mean, he, he knows the word better than we do. A house divided will not stand against itself. Yeah, amen. Now, think about it. You know, I, I was not very good in math, but I knew that, you know, if one can chase a thousand, two could chase two thousand. Not in God's ways. Because the word of God says, if one can chase a thousand, two can chase ten thousand. Woo! Okay, yeah. I was just thinking, God, can I go this way? He said, yeah. Church, we got to understand something. We're not fighting against each other. We have an enemy to fight. Amen. I know, believe me, I'm not trying to be braggadocious. Is that a word? Yes. Okay, I guess it just came out. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not trying to be mean or arrogant. I know what I can do by myself in terms of ministry. I know. Because I've done it for 27 years. But now it's a different season in my life. I know I can chase a thousand. Oh, I know. Because I've seen God do it over and over and over. I've seen God heal 700 people in five minutes. In a six, 7,000 member church. But now, 
What is the season that I'm in, that I believe that I'm in right now? I'm wanting and I'm wanting to connect so we can have greater results even. Because one can chase a thousand. Okay, I got that part. But two, two, two can chase 10,000. So power is multiplied when we're united. Yeah. I'm not talking about uniform because that means you cannot even think, which is what some people are trying to do. Can I even have a different opinion? Otherwise you're wrong because you're disagreement. That, no, no, that's not it. We're talking about if one can chase a thousand, we need to get to the place where as a church, as a body of believers, as a family, as a couple, as a husband and a wife, we need to get to the place where two of us can chase 10,000. Because the first part, if I got the first part and God does the first part, I can be sure he can do the second part, which is if there is two in agreement, we can change a city upside down. If there's people that are connected, if we are, if we are always hanging out where people are murmuring and complaining, that's all we're going to do. And what I believe God wants us to do in 2021, it's like, can we step ahead of complaints and can we come in agreement? Can we get to a place where we're going to hear the word of God and we're going to move? Where we're going to hear the word of God and we're going to preach and we're going to teach and we're going to share and we're going to sing and we're going to do whatever God tells us to do because the Amalekites are always coming. Oh, the Amalekites... That represents the flesh. The Amalekites that are connected to Esau. The Amalekites who has an appetite for blood. And what are we going to do? Are they going to defeat us? I don't think so. They are not. But we have to come in agreement. And again, and that's why Jehovah Nisi is so powerful. Because we're not coming in agreement to promote one another. We're coming in agreement to promote Jesus. We're coming in agreement to promote the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're coming in agreement to let the name of Jesus be lifted up. Amen. We're coming together. So I believe there is still people in Ephraim that needs to be saved. Amen. I believe there's still people that are in churches in Ephraim that needs to be saved. Because church doesn't take you to heaven. I believe there's, I mean, when you see the youth. When you see what those kids, our kids, go to in school. And then when I ask them, believe me, I ask them. And I say, don't those kids know Jesus? You know what my kids say? Dad, most of them go to churches. And it breaks my heart. Because how can you spend an hour or two or three or whatever many hours you spend a week in church and never change? It does. It breaks my heart when I see that. And I, and I ask, I ask Kimmy, I ask my, my daughters. It's like, no, Dad, they go to church. Yeah, but the problem is like they're not getting the point. They're just there doing nothing. Their lives are supposed to be there so they can be transformed by the renewing of their mind. So that they can believe that in Jesus all things are possible. Amen. Not attacking one another. I mean, the amount of attacks my kids, you know, I know your kids go through, but, you know, I'm talking about my kids. Because they stand up for truth. Praise God. At 14, 17, and 18, they stand up for truth. It's not very popular. It's not very common. And they do lose a lot of friends. They hardly have any friends. They have a few. But I had to endure, even here in Effingham, someone came to me and said, you know what, your, your kids make me sick. And I said, really? Why is that? All that they talk is about Jesus. And I was like, whoa! I thought, if they make you sick, I mean, I didn't say it, but I thought, if they make you sick, good! Bless your heart. Because it's like, if the way that they have their relationship with Jesus bothers you, you're not saved. Amen. I'm sorry. But if you get mad, why don't you get mad over the kids that are getting drunk? The kids that are lining up to get an abortion. Why don't you get mad over the kids that are using drugs and booze and all that craziness? Why don't you get mad over those things? You're going to get mad over my kids because they love Jesus? No. 
And I tell them all the time. And I, I don't need, you know, it's not like I don't tell them. I do. So guys, I back you up. Now, she's being trained on the youth. And I tell her all the time. She's 17. And I tell her, Val, don't worry, I back you up. As long as you're following this, as long as you're declaring the name of Jesus, I'll back you up. I'm with you. Because sometimes it's like the enemy tries to use, and again, you know, they're surrounded by people that they are so spiritually dehydrated that yes, they're going after those likes. Like, 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 like. Or the angry face. It looks like a demon. Emoji. You know, so it's like sometimes I have, we got to come together, step out Amen. in front of the crowd. No, you're not called to walk with everybody. Right. And most likely, if you're walking for Jesus, very, very likely you're going to be by yourself. Amen. But I'd rather be by myself with Jesus than be with the crowd. Amen. Are you with me? Yes. Amen. So when we see here, that's why it's so relevant, because the Amalekites, they keep it coming. They keep it coming, and they keep it coming, and they keep it coming. And they always will keep it coming, because they represent the flesh. You want to get out from Egypt, and the enemy wants you to have a crazy appetite. I'm not only talking about food and drinking and whatever. You know, it's way more than that. It's like, the, you, you, you see, the, 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 you know, the, the fruits of the spirit and the, the uh, is it works? Works of the flesh. You know, it's, it's like the enemy wants you. Why? Because he wants to put you in a bondage. Yeah. Oh, God, he wants you to be free. Yeah, yeah. So never forget the Amalekites. They did to you as you came out from Egypt. They attacked you when you were exhausted and weary. And they struck down those who were straggling behind. They had no fear of God. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. So while they're in refugee, the warriors of Amalek and Moses said, choose some men to go and fight the army of the Amalek for us. Tomorrow it will stand at the top of the hill, holding the staff of God in my hand. And so Joshua did what Moses had commanded and fought the army of Amalek. Meanwhile, Moses, Aaron, and Ur climbed to the top of a nearby hill. As long as Moses held up the staff in his hand, the Israelites had the advantage. But whenever he dropped his hand, the Amalekites gained advantage. Moses' arms soon became so tired. Uh, no, he's over 80 years old. Come on. Moses' arms were soon became so tired, he could no longer hold them up. So Aaron and Ur found a stone for him to sit on. Then they stood on each side of Moses, supporting, holding up his hands. So his hands held up steady until sunset. As a result, Joshua overwhelmed the army of Amalek in battle. Oh, I love it. Say that with me. With the people. With the people. Ahead of the people. Ahead of the people. Above the people. Above the people. Because that's the third point. So first Moses is with the people. Then they complain. They murmur. He got into Moses' brain. Then God said, go ahead of them. But at this point of the battle, when the Amalekites came, God said, go up. Say that with me. Go up. Go up. we got to learn how to do that. It's not easy. But going up, and not only that, there's another dynamic. Say that with me. Hands on. Hands on. Hands up. Hands up. Hands under. Hands under. That's the other thing. Joshua was with his hands on. Moses was with his hands up. Aaron and Ur were, were with their hands under hands up was Moses hands under but they were all connected Amen. so there's no there's no such a thing I mean if you're going to walk by the book we got to understand that the battle happens in, in the mountaintop and in the valley yeah. if we just pray 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 and do nothing about it nothing's going to happen 
You can storm up the heavens and pray big time prayers. But if we don't understand, that's why when Peter comes to Jesus and he said, oh, this is amazing. Whoa, Moses is here. Elijah is here. Jesus is here. Let us build three tents. Why? We always want to camp out where the manifestation is. But we got to go to the valley. It would be great. You know, to have moments like this or moments where the word is flowing and worship and power and praise and adoration and healings and deliverance. Praise God. Go to the valley. Ministry happens with this dynamic. We have to have both. So there are those who are going to fight. But there was, you see the connection that as Moses held his hands up, Joshua won the battle with his hands on. Moses was not there fighting. Joshua was. And when God talks to them, they were as one. Amen. So it's not only praying. It's not only fighting. It's not, no, no, no. It has to be both. But the third one is like, it has to be that support. And I do. I, I love the English language because sometimes in Portuguese we're so limited with some words. People say that about English. So I check this word out. Support. What, we don't have that. Not even half of that in Portuguese. Support. To endure bravely. To promote the interest or cause of. To uphold or defend as a valid or right. To assist or help. This is support. To bid and bridge so as to show support for. To provide with substantiation. To maintain financially. To provide a basis for the, act, the existence of. To hold up or serve as a foundation for. To keep from fainting. To comfort. To keep something going. Woo! Amen. That's a good clapping point. Amen. Because <laughs> all of that is support. Let me say something else. I'm almost done. My first closing. Can you see those passages? I'm closing and they never close. <laughs> so this is my first closing. We're getting there. It's only three. Is it three o'clock in the afternoon? Good <laughs> Yeah, that's, that was what I was going to say. Church understand this. And I really mean it. As a, as, 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 as a body of believers, as a church, because I, I believe many churches are missing this now. How many of you believe we're connected? Yes. And now I'm Amen. talking us. Amen? Amen. How many of you believe we're connected? Yes. yes. So if we believe and we have that understanding, that means... If my hands are up, that is going to affect you when you're with her hands on. But I'm not as old as Moses, but my hands do get tired. So there are going to be those who come alongside, me, you know, close to me to support. But let me, can I go deeper? Yeah. Okay, three of you. I will. Because I don't, you know, next week, something else. If I'm traveling to do ministry, even though you're not going with me physically, we're connected. Yes. Can you see that? Yes. So, because, I, you know, again, because we do put our lives in Facebook and other social media platforms, people think, and people have said that to me, oh, it's so nice that you travel so much. But if you see the essence of my traveling, it's 90% of the times, ministry. Amen. Yes. So, if you understand that, that means that, and it, it was hundreds of testimonies in November when I was in Brazil. You might not have seen it. You don't, maybe you're not even on Facebook anymore or other social media platforms or you don't like it. Or, but I just want to say to you, whatever happened there and the results that we had and the people that were saved and the people that were healed and delivered, you're part of it. Come on, you should be more excited. Yeah. Than that. Thank you, Lord. Because it's like, man, I, I never went to a mission trip, and I can say that because I've been on both sides of the school. I was in a time where it was like everything happened in a trip, and whatever happened in the trip, it was my provision for the next week or two or a month. Amen. 
Right now, and that's where I want us to understand, it's like the fact that the church provides for me and my family, and I'm doing ministry, we're connected. Amen. And I will read a scripture if you need it. And we will. Because it's like many people disconnect. Many people, when they see that, they don't understand. Every time, and I did, I do, I go out a lot when I travel, because I don't like to be in a little bit apartment, which is like, I mean, the, 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 the space that we have there, I have an apartment, it's about, it's about this platform here. I don't want to be 30 days here. And that's why I go, and I go out, and I pray, and I preach, and I teach, and I go out with people, and always we have conversations, and you know, and, and we have fellowship. Yes, we're eating, and we're eating very good, praise God for that. <laughs> but more than that, every miracle, every person, everyone that was touched, you're part of it. Amen. Amen. I said it, and I mean it, you're part of it. Amen. You are part of it. Because there was a time I didn't know if I was going to have to pay my rent or next month. Not anymore. Why? Because we're connected. Yeah. Yeah. You understand that? Yes. So it's like, I don't need to, you know, if they bless me with an offering, praise God. If they don't, I know my family is going to be taken care of. Amen. Because we're connected. Yes. So there's many churches, they're breaking that. And many churches see the pastor as someone that's like employed by the church. Church, and I say that and I say all the time. For me, being a pastor was never a job. Amen. It's a calling. Amen. Amen. Some have it, some don't. Yes. For me, it's a calling. Yes. I'm, not in, I'm, not, I'm not in it for the money. <laughs> Especially because we've never had it for a long time. So if I was in for money, would you stay in the ministry 27 years? When the offering that you get is a cold sandwich in a, in a Coke with no gas in it? Oh, many times. That was my offering. A Coke, you know when you open a Coke and it has no, is that what you say? Yeah. 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 The sparkling is gone. Yeah. yeah, that was the offering. Yeah, go provide now to pay your rent. We will coke like that. So I really, really mean it. Let me read you something to you because this is important. We're going somewhere. Amen. I said we're going somewhere. Amen. Philippians 4:10. It, Paul talks about the, the Philippian church generosity. Now I'm really close to closing, so this is my second quote. <laughs> but I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now, at last, your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be abased. I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I have learned both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Nevertheless... You have done well that you shared. Now, pay attention to this. Very important. Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. Now, you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. So he was an apostle of many churches. The other churches, they were not providing for Paul's needs as an apostle. But this church in Philippi, the Philippi, the Philippians, they did. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving, but you only. For even in Thessalonica, you sent aid once and again for my necessities. Now look, and this is important, look what he said. Not that I seek the gift. But I seek the fruit that abounds for your account. Yeah. Are we connected or not? Amen. Amen. So that means that because you provide, you have a heavenly account. Yeah. Come on, you can do better than that. Amen. I don't seek the gift, but I seek that the fruit. You can read it. Write it down that scripture. So you see it. That's what is there. 
that the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, receive, having received from Epaphroditus. This is have a name like that, Epaphroditus. The thing sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God, so now see, everybody cries on this promise. Oh, my God shall supply all my needs. Not for everybody, but for the church of Philippi. Why? Because this church was providing for a man of God. Because this church was meeting the needs of Apostle Paul. So Paul turns around and he said, you have an account. You have a heavenly account. So whatever happens in my ministry is going to be a blessing to you. We are connected. And my God, I, so he was telling that church specifically. And my God shall supply all your need. Why? Because you provided for my need. Oh, this is good. Amen. Can you see iron and ore? Yes. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So again, say with me. Hands on. Hands, on. hands, up. hands up. Hands under. So from now on, whatever we do, the ministries we bless, the people we bring here, the missionaries that will come to our church, whatever we do and bless and give financially, you can expect a reward. Amen. Not from man. We're beyond that. It's like in God, you know you have a heavenly account. Amen. So it's like our church in Brazil. We, you, I don't know if you know, but we do. We dig wells in the, in the up north in Brazil in areas where one well is going to give water to over 20,000 people. Amen. And I've sown into it personally. And I'm connected. They're connected with me there. Amen. So every time I do it, and, and I might not even go to the well ever. And actually, we've done seven already. There's a pastor right now in Africa. He sent me a little note. You know what is their biggest need? $500 to build a bathroom. Because they don't have a bathroom. They have a hole in the floor. And he said, Pastor, if we can have a bathroom, the people can start coming to church again. So if we do, if you participate, if we give into debt, I might not ever go to Africa, but because of what I did, in, I, in a heavenly account, that's going to count. Amen. Uh, count. Amen. Amen. I remember one time this missionary, when I had a church in, in New Jersey, a missionary came to us. It was in Peru that pastor came. Because I know we gave him a yama. A yama? Lama? Lama, right? Yeah, that's why he needed it. So we raised an offering. And the church could, you know, put more money in because I, I don't remember now. This is like twenty plus years ago. We gave him anyama, so I have anyama on my heavenly account, and maybe that's why I have so many coats. I don't know. Just saying, winter coats. Amen. <laughs> Bless his heart. <laughs> Did you get something from this message? Amen. Let me close with this. Because all this dynamic happens with the people, ahead of the people, above the people, and then hands on and hands up and hands under. But you see, the enemy wanted to bring division. The, the enemy wanted to divide them. And the enemy came after they complained. But as when, when Moses heard, and he's on top of the mountain, and as, as his hands are going up, Joshua is winning. But then when, you know, when they, they won the battle, I mean, they, they did big time. And Moses' arm soon became so tired. I'm not even going to get to that. We don't have time. Holding up his hands. So his hands held uh, steady until sunset. As a result, Joshua overwhelmed the army of the Amalekites in the battle. After the victory, look at this. The Lord instructed Moses, write this down on a scroll and uh, as a permanent reminder and, and, and read it aloud, aloud to Joshua. I will erase the memory of the Amalek from the under heaven 
Moses built an altar there and named Yahweh Nisi, Yahweh Nisi, which means the Lord is my banner. Say that with me. The Lord, the Lord is, my is my banner. And look why it says more, which means the Lord is my banner. He said, they have raised their fist against the Lord's throne. So now the Lord will be at war with Amalek generation after generation. So I want to close with the Lord is my banner because this is important. Um, when, when we say the Lord is my banner, number one is like, the, the, you know, we're not, our banner is not a strong tower. Our banner is not me. Our banner is not a person. Our banner is the Lord. Amen. Now, because when we say that is in his power, that enemies are vanquished. The Lord is our banner in that he is the one under whom we unite. Now you can say amen to all those points. Amen. He is our savior. Amen. We are rescued by him and identified in him. A banner is something that identifies and unifies a particular group of people. The Israelites saying, the Lord is my banner, was a way of identifying themselves as the unified followers of the Lord God. A banner also functions as a rallying point for troops in a battle. Yes. The, altar, the altar Moses built, Exodus 17, marked the place where God intervened on behalf of his people and promised to utterly defeat his enemies. So the Lord is my banner. That name proclaims God's leadership and protection of his people. So the hands and rod of Moses were held up in the same way that soldiers hold up their flags in the time of battle. As these flags bear the insignia of their country, the soldiers are said, I mean, even gave that picture where, you know, the U.S. soldiers yeah. lifting up that flag. The soldiers are said to fight under that banner. The Israelites, Israelites fought under the direction of God, Jehovah Nisi. It was under the Lord's banner, and with His aid, they fought in His name and strength, and they conquered. Amen. Hallelujah. Can you clap an offering to the Lord? He is our banner. He is our banner. Stand with me. Hallelujah. Is he our banner? Amen. So say with me, Lord, Lord you, are my banner. you are my banner. Some, Some may trust in horses. Trust in horses. Some may trust in chariots. Trust in uh, but we will, we will trust in the name of the Lord. We will trust in the name of the Lord. And we, we, we embrace Unity. Unity. We, will fight, we will fight not against one another. Against we have a devil to fight. We have, we have an enemy to fight. We enemy. So we speak today, we speak today. Unity. unity. The unity that comes unity. Through, the of God. through the Spirit of God. In Jesus' name, In Jesus name. Lord, forgive me Lord, for not realizing Lord, that, I that I have a heavenly account. Have heavenly and from now on, Everything that I do, everything that we do together in the kingdom, whatever is the results, we go to that account. So in Jesus' name, I speak freedom. No more bitterness. No more murmuring. No more complaining. In Jesus' name, we're moving ahead of that. We're going up. We have our hands. In the, in the plow. And we're not going to look back. Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus, name, in Jesus name. My hands are on. Because there are hands that are up. And, and God is, will give me the grace. To use my hands. To bring support. And we all. As one. Will fight. And we'll see. Many victories. Many victories. In the name of the Lord, the of the Lord. We'll, be we'll be glorified. You believe that? Amen. Come on. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Can we, 
Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you today.